So let's agree that we are here by divine appointment. Let's agree that we are in a special place under his divine anointment. Let's just set aside our papers and be still. Let's just believe that we are in tune with the Oversoul. Let's just believe that there is a divine message that is specialized and particularized for you, for me, for each of us. Though we hear the same word and words coming over my tongue, through my mouth, each of us hears in his own tongue, language, understanding. In a way that each of us is empowered, enabled, instructed, directed, and helped to apply the spiritual principles and lessons that come through our minds in a way that as we hear and receive in faith, believing, that even as we hear those words are words of power because they are not Amon's words. Let's believe together that they are God's words transmitted by the Holy Spirit, the voice for God in my mind, your mind. Therefore, believing this, then we believe that those words go into effect as we receive it, and it does according to the image, the power that is in those words that we receive, God's words. Because he said, so does the words that go forth out of my mouth, they do not return unto me void, but accomplish whereunto it is sent. It is in this belief that we believe in instantaneous healing, correction, adjustment, answer, and so because we believe it, we return to this state of awareness and consciousness and a state of expectation, expecting to receive. And because we are expecting to receive, <coughs> we receive, we just listen, let go, let God, as we say, thank you, Father, Mother, God. Amen. Amen. And so it is. You are here because most of you received an email. And the first line says, you are what? Son. Son. <laughs> is that right? This is a special call. Now, why are you guys sitting all the way back there? Against the brain I also said on one of the pages, did I explain to you why? In terms of my own personal experience, yeah. you tell me? that I feel that I'm going through something. I feel that I'm immersed in something. I feel so on high. I feel, I, I quoted on Sunday a guidance, uh, a quote by a ghost who said, he used the word struggle. He used the word pain. And he said that, um, but he said he was talking to a group of students. He was not talking to the general public. He was talking to advanced students. And he was sharing with them how it was that he struggled sometimes to receive, to perceive what's coming through. And he labors with it. And he said that while he's talking, he is seeing, I'm paraphrasing, I'm not quoting him exactly, in essence he's saying that he is seeing uh, 
something for the first time. Even though it's been in front of him all the time, he's just seeing it at a level of clarity as if he hasn't heard it or seen it before. And he was talking about how powerful it is and that while he's teaching the students, he is getting much more from it than the students are getting. And it's helping, he said, and he said, it's helping me more than it's helping you. Because I can see it and feel it much clearer than that. That's what I was experiencing with this that I'm talking about today. And Sister Linda is more responsible for this. Y'all know that, right? Yep. She came in here and messed us up. <laughs> it started with the first day that you, I don't know if the first day you were here, probably was the first or second or third time. And at the end of the lesson, you remember the dialogue, the interchange, it was extended. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, I thought, well, Next week, I've got to readdress this because not only her, but a couple of others, I wasn't so sure that you were as clear even as she was. But she seemed to be on the second, at the second meeting, more satisfied. That, okay, that was clear. But then on the third, the Sunday that followed, I was scheduled to speak at guidance. And I just made that part three of the topic, spiritual healing. But it is. But we have to go through spiritual healing when it is not to understand what spiritual healing is, remember? Right. And so, when I came back here on that Tuesday, somewhere I did spiritual healing part four. Where was that? That was here. Yeah. And since then, I was back at Guidance, which was this past Sunday, and I'm sitting there trying to find out because their theme was awakening. I was trying to develop a, a message that surrounded their monthly theme. Nothing would come, but I tell you what did come. What wouldn't leave my mind was the same topic. Mm -hmm. Spiritual healing. Mm -hmm. And spirit, just like the voice said, you ain't finished yet. Do you know that's how A Course in Miracles came? Does anybody know? That? Do you know the story of A Course in Miracles and how it came? You should read the story. Go video, go on YouTube and just look at some of the videos on how say A Course in Miracles how it came. It came the same way. The boy says, No, you're not finished yet. No, you're not finished yet. No, and that's what happened. So I'm sitting there trying to come up with a message for guidance on Sunday, and the boy said, No, you're not finished with this yet. So my topic was tell them how to separate the problem from the desire. So that was my topic. Separate the problem from the desire. <clears throat> now, I saw it in that moment, but when you get up there like a ghost, we have like an alarm or somebody like that to talk about it, 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 something's going on. So something happened up in there on Sunday. The people were affected, impacted. Mm. <laughs> the, 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 the conversations and the sharing uh, coming through them as they were coming through the door as they were leaving and then not only that they were just just in the room they just jail they just were talking about it and sharing what each one experienced and felt separating the problem from the desire because of what I said is what I had said to us several weeks leading up to that is that we unknowingly are praying for what we're getting. We're getting what we're praying for, and we're getting what we don't want, but we're praying for what we don't want, and we're confused and don't know it, and we're reinforcing the problem, and your prayer is sustaining the problem and creating problems. <laughs> because you're praying for the problem, on the problem, about the problem. So you guess what you're getting? That's when you've been trained. Because the Bible says, whatever you ask, then that's where the problem is. And you're asking, asking for healing, and asking for money, and asking for this. That's because that's the literal understanding and the literal interpretation. Ask does not mean ask in that sense. Ask means to claim. Ask us to choose and claim 
And it says, in a, but that's the one interpretation, that's one translation, that's one version, because the same uh, 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 scripture is read a different way in a different translation or version. Whatsoever things you desire, same scripture. When you pray, believe that you receive it, and you shall have that. But it didn't say anything about problem. It says, what serving things you what? Desire. Desire. So if I said that this series of lessons is a self-diagnostic to diagnose your method and your strategy and what you're doing, take a look at what you're doing and make sure that you know what you're doing. Because prayer is a powerful thing to be using the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> this thing. So we don't realize that we're not praying for the desire. You're praying for the problem. It says whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. Desire is a powerful, powerful word. My topic today is part five of this series. The four CDs are on the table there. And I'm speaking at guidance this Sunday. Guess what the topic is going to be and what part's going to be? Part six. <laughs> Guess what the topic is going to be? I don't know. I didn't know what this one was going to be until yesterday. Clarify desire. So today we want to, we separate the problem from the desire. Today let's clarify desire. Let's really leave here knowing what desire is. I desire to get out of foreclosure. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a desire, huh? It's not. I, I, I desire a new job. I desire to, this relationship to be healed. I desire this problem to be solved with this child. I desire to be healed of this disease, this sickness. I desire to be healer, I desire success in my business. I desire, I desire, I desire that that dog to start barking. I desire. I've had that problem before. And you pray for those, it didn't say pray for those things. It said pray for what you desire. And we never pray for what we desire. We pray for all those things. God don't know nothing about that stuff. God doesn't understand that language. That's material stuff. God does not answer your material needs and wants. You know, you have needs and you have wants. Those are legitimate. Now, that takes us back to where we started from in the very first lesson. We said there are many methods of prayer. Didn't we say that? There are many methods of prayer. And we don't want to put any of them down. Discredit. No. Because those methods of prayer work for people. I've used different methods and you've used different methods. So you don't want to start, you know, go, go all negative, go south. But remember that the second time was the first message. The second one was, you can't put old wine in the museums. So we don't try to reconcile what we're talking about today to anything that you already know, that you already believe. There's nothing wrong with all of that stuff. We're saying that 
There comes a time in life when you're dealing with a this kind. I am specifically talking about the this kind. Then you're dealing with a situation. It's no longer a situation, but it is transformed into a situation. A situation is something that the all those other methods are not working. Have not worked, not working fast enough, or you feel that this is too grave, this is incurable, this is impossible, this is, I'm too mad for all of those other things. I can't let this go. This has been a long time. Uh, I've been told that I've got six months, or this is incurable, and this is not going away, or uh, uh, this is, a, uh, I, I'm not employed. Uh, you know, I, I go on with all of this. On and on and on. Well, that's a discount. The method I'm talking about today, I'm talking about when you need some help. And you want to take a break and go back to your classes and your seminars and your reading and your old, your way after you take care of business. This is called spiritual healing. Now, in spiritual healing, we we talked about the fact that there you have to understand that in the universe, in the world, in your humanism, in, in humanity, in man's life, uh, uh, in the world, there are laws that must be obeyed. We have the laws of nature, the laws of science, the laws of, come on, help me. Gravity. Laws of gravity, laws of heat, gravity, laws of nutrition, the laws of health. The laws that we can walk, but they all need to be obeyed. You know, you, you don't you don't say that you can use this and just do away with all of that. No, even with the spiritual healing, it might take you through those laws to manifest this. So you have to stay in obedience with laws, known laws. But this that we're talking about takes no consideration <laughs> of those laws. <laughs> takes no consideration of any of your laws. <laughs> you take consideration. But God is no respecter of creating them for you to, to, to comply with them to, through the norms, but here, this law transcends all laws, supersedes all laws. And keep in mind that what I'm talking about cannot be reconciled to your intellectual understanding. So what you have to be willing to do is by faith. You listen, hear, and just practice, just do. I've given you many personal examples in my life. I haven't told you all. And so look at your past out. It says, desire is not. What does it say? Let's read it. Read that line. Desire is not me, want, wish, go, request, appeal, plea, entreat, ask. Let's be careful what we are asking for. When we do the asking, we're, we're choosing and we're claiming and, 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 and what we're doing is getting into the reality of the thing that we're praying for. So, But you can't get into those problems. Desire is what? Unseen, invisible, intangible, impersonal, immaterial. So, 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 what we're doing here is clarifying desire. 
as we clarify it, remember Neville's whole thing is feeling is the secret. Am I right? Yeah. What we're, as we're doing, what I'm helping you do is get into the feeling. Feeling. The right feeling when you pray, because that's where it's at. What are you feeling? It's in the feeling. Now what we're doing is we're learning how to, how to put some juice in desire, in our understanding of desire. Put some power in our desire by understanding what desire is. Clarify what desire is. Desire is believable. It is conceivable. It is imaginable. It is supposable. It is thinkable. It is presumable. It is assumable. It is touchable. It is feeling. It's energy. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray. Wow! You've just been looking at that as a word and walking away. <laughs> about energy. We're talking about power. We're talking about creation. We're talking about creation. We're talking about the power of imagination. You can assume. You have to assume a state of consciousness in your desire. Whatever things you desire when you pray, that tells you you're supposed to be doing some work when you pray. You know how we do this otherwise? We speak it, say it, and walk away. Mm -hmm. And walk away and just wait for something to happen. Mysterious way out. Well, because we've been told that. I just said it. God works in mysterious ways. But it's going to be working through your desire. Desire, therefore, is behind the problem. What's everything you ask? The things that you're asking for, praying for, desire is behind. Let's talk about the job. You're praying for the job. That's a that's a need. That's a want. But what is the job going to do for you? What is it going to bring? Why do you need it? See, that's the desire right there. That's behind. That's the system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I saw money. I'm going to go to that clap. But we, we're going to be happy, you know. <laughs> what you going to do with the money? <laughs> Scratch your itch. <laughs> What's my desire? I want to scratch my itch, but then pray for the scratch of the itch. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> might not have to, you won't, might not make it to the club. God's raised me up. <laughs> God said, I got ways that you know that. And I say itch is because it's it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So itch is legal. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever. It means anything whatsoever. It doesn't matter how big it is, how grave it is, how it, whatsoever things you desire when you pray. As you are praying, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Mark 11, 24 is what we just went through. On your pass out, 
Neville says, you must understand the principles and dynamics of, oh, that's my right, sometimes I'm too. <laughs> of the primary causation and secondary causation. And that's where we get tripped up because these terms are definitely interchangeable yes. in your regular practice of life. You don't, you, you, you confuse cause, they, they should. It just depends on what this cause, but why don't we fast track and say that we're just gonna go all the way past what you think causes things. Because we talked before, this is week five. Let's just sum it up by saying there's only one cause in the universe. There's only one cause in everything in your life from the cradle to the grave that you experience comes from one particular source, one particular cause. Therefore, it doesn't matter what you've experienced from the cradle to the grave, how ugly it is, how bastard it is, how, how mean, how hurtful, how painful, how, how whatever, even if it kills you, and no matter how wonderful it is, how much it can't give you. Everything comes from the same source, from the one cause. Now, what's empowering about that is that it reminds you that therefore you have the power, you have the access to the power and the cause that change, that can change anything that you're experiencing in life now because you go back to that same cause. You go back to that same source. You go back to that same creator. Yes, it created whatever the sickness it is. Yes, it created, what, but you used it. Your mind create your thoughts, your desires. Well, how did I? Well, see, that's a good question. How did I desire that? Well, here is my answer. When you find out, let me know. <laughs> there might be an answer to that, but I don't want to ask those kind of questions. Because that, that might have to go to the library, I might have to go meditate, I might have to go 10 years to figure that out. And I'm gone, because I'm 72 now. I don't need to know those questions. Those, I, don't ask, I don't ask those kind of questions. Because, right, because I said, if everything comes from it, then I don't need to know that. Get all into that mess. Everything comes from the one. And if I say that I can, all I want to do is learn how to get back to that same source and cause to change this. That's all I want. There is no cause in the physical. There is no cause in the nature. There is no cause in material. There is no cause. So every problem, therefore, is what? It's an effect. It is a symptom. What happens here, we get messed up, is, is that that becomes a cause that causes other things in our life. Mm -hmm. That symptom, that effect. We now, it has no power, but we give it power. Yes. Of itself, it has no power, but it has assumed power. Using our creative nature, our creative power, we give it. We can give it power to cause things in our life. So let's think of a symptom. High blood pressure. Well, what does high blood pressure cause? Heart attacks. Heart attacks, strokes. strokes blood clots. Blood clots. See, see all that cause? Aneurysm. Wait a minute. Aneurysm. Wait a minute. Look, now, so we're going to look at how blood pressure and all of them, but now we're going to extrapolate this and apply the same logic to every other thing in life. You got that? Now let's, let's, let's use this, and then let's apply the same logic to every other thing in life. So let's work with this one. 
now, that becomes now primary causation. Because it's now causing other things, all these things, which are secondary, right? They become, they become other symptoms of this cause. And you go on and on and on. And what else can it cause? It can cause you to lose your job, that same thing. It can cause you to lose your marriage. It can cause you to lose your relationship. Because they didn't know you had all that stuff before you <laughs> They want to go to the club. You may want to go. <laughs> my head hurts. <laughs> Give me my medicine. <laughs> All those second, then that causes something else. Yeah, that's right. So, what caused the divorce? <laughs> <laughs> Too many bills. <laughs> Used up all the insurance. <laughs> causes, they cause. One thing causes another. Cause. Remember, everything causes. First, which is first or which is second? You know, you don't know. You don't forget. <laughs> Primary and secondary causations. That's it. This is laws, laws of nature. Every problem. Now remember this. So it really doesn't matter what we're dealing with in life. If it's financial, if it's if it's love, if it's if it's personal, if it's if it's in the medical, it doesn't matter. It is an effect. It is a symptom that has no power. Right. And the only power it has is your thinking. Your feeling, and you can reverse it, neutralize it, cancel it to the degree that you believe what we're talking about. Behold, what are we doing? Clarifying desire. Keep in mind, that's what we're doing. Clarifying desire. Let's catch it. We say this stuff is caught, not taught. Caught. Not taught. What I know I catch. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, Revelation 3.20. What is the eye, you tell me? Imagination. What else is the eye? I stand at the door and knock. Desire. It is the desire. The desire is the divine urge. It is creation. Stand in the knock at your door. That's the sickness. That's the problem. That's the urgent need. That's the eviction notice. That's the pink slip. That's the I hate you. <laughs> I don't ever want to see you no more. You ain't my daddy anyway. That's the, that, that, you know, that's the knock at the door. Don't you ever speak to me. Now, come, come. I stand at the door and knock. That's the eviction notice. I just can't find no job. That's the knock, 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 knock. <laughs> Well, here's what we, we want to dress it up. It, and it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, it's an effect. It's a symptom. It's an expression. It's an outcome of something. And now you have labeled it fear. Oh, scared of it. Come out of your own mind. Out of your own making is your stuff. So the first step is to welcome it. Embrace it. And you ask it the question, saying, You sure you know what you're doing? You sure know you sure you know who you're dealing with? Like this might be the end of you messing with me. Do you know who I am? Now every you have to remind it of who you are. So you come back to truth immediately and recognize it as what it is and appeal.
assurance and illusion and name it. See, no, 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 you're not that. I'll tell you who you are. <laughs> you are an appearance. Yes. You are an illusion. And you don't have no power. So you talk. Now, that means that week three, the topic was, I am peculiar. You got to remember your name. You have to remember your name because right here, where is it? Is it on your right? Where is it? Huh? Peculiar. Peculiar. Is the scripture there? There it is. Isaiah 28, 21. But the Lord will write, well, no, the first one, Deuteronomy 14, 2. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Now this is how it's saying how God sees you. And, the, and God has chosen you to be what a peculiar people unto himself. Why? For the Lord will rise up, Isaiah 28, 21. As he did at Mount Perizim, he will rouse himself as he did in the valley of Gideon to accomplish his work, his peculiar work, to perform his task, his strange task. He only performs it in your desire. What did he do at Mount Perizim? Perizim. They're referring back to what God did for David. When he was going into the valley of the giants, going up against the Philistines. So he prayed. And what did God do? God answered him. He was getting ready to go up to me. He said, No, don't go up there. Go down here around, and you will hear a sound in the mulberry trees. And when you do, move. And I will slay them. He slayed them. And David called that place, what? The place of breakthrough. That says to us, and I said on Sunday, that's a symptom. That's the problem. Whatever you're experiencing in life now, and after you take care of that, something else will happen. And when that happens, that's your place of breakthrough. It is time for the healing, the answer to come through. If it didn't, you wouldn't be dealing with it. It's time for healing. It's time for a breakthrough. That's all that means. And so, how is it going to come to pass in peculiar ways? Not according to any known law. Not according to all your law, the laws of nature, the laws of nutrition, the laws of health, the laws of science, the laws of medicine. Give me some more. The laws of the laws of the laws of the laws. <coughs> no, 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 no. If you have this peculiar mindset, if you have this sense of peculiarity, if you have a member, if you got your membership card. Then what happens is that you do not know how the answer is going to come. You do not know. Let's find that. Where it says, because uh, mine is, I have mine typed out differently. Maybe I'll look at your page. You can pass out. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Where it says, be perfectly indifferent. It's right under Isaiah 28, 21. Right under that scripture. It says, be perfectly indifferent to the evidence of the senses. <laughs> this is desire. So you, you, you're behind the problem, behind the, behind the need, behind the one. Forget about that. Now you're in desire. What do you desire? I'm not going to tell the whole story about the home thing, but let me tell you what I desired when I would tell the story about how my home came. I didn't pray for a house. 
I desire a home. A house is not a home. You make it a home. Every house is not a home. You can't buy a home. Wherever you are, you can make it a home. You don't have to be in a house to have a home. That's why you can't make some people leave where they are because they are in their home and you want them to be in a house. Yeah. 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 You don't need to be there. Well, maybe they think you don't need to be there where you are. Home is in desire. That's why some people can't get a house. Because they, are, they can't afford the house. But you can afford a home. So earn your home, create your home, make your home in spirit and in mind, and then the home will find a house. Yeah. What we want to do is apply the same thing, the same logic to everything else. Yeah. It, it, it realizes itself. It shows up as the thing itself. That's God showing up as it. God showing up as the home, as the healing, as the thing itself. That's what desire is. Desire is God realizing itself. And as I said on Sunday, that's in here, then the problem dissolves in the process. The problem disappears. Is the problem that you thought was there, you'll see that it wasn't there in the first place. In here, it says that you find it. Where's help me find this? Where it says the solution is the problem. Where is it? Your desire is the solution and your problem. Alright, let me go back. Oh, on the front page? On the second page. On the second page. Right there. Yeah. Oh, you see the same, same line? Next line. Yeah. Be perfectly indifferent. Be perfectly indifferent to the evidence of the senses. Then it says so that. Let's break it down. It says not until you are perfectly indifferent, which means not looking to man's way, not looking to mortal mind, not thinking you can figure out the mind of God. Be perfectly indifferent. Stop trying to figure this thing out. <laughs> You may feel so that you may feel the naturalness of your desire, which means feel that you are already in it, that you already have it, that the answer is already here, that you're already doing it, making your plans. Reverend and I talked to y'all a long time ago. When you didn't tell nobody you were listening to him. Secretly listening to him. Go and say, go over the old road and go into those stores and try on those clothes and go into that car line and get in that car and smell the newness of it. Imagine yourself driving it and then go into your home and just, uh, that's, 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 that's desire. That's desire. That's desire. You, so, so you, you may feel the naturalness of your desire. Get you one of them. You, you see, if you've seen those pillows, some pillows are like this, and then you have those long pillows like this. Get you one of those long pillows and put it inside you. Roll over like this. <laughs> <laughs> Roll over like this. Roll over like this. Roll over like this. Roll over like this. Roll over like until it becomes who you want to be. Wrap your legs around you.
You gotta do what you have to do. Your next scheduled doctor's appointment. You go there before you get there. You go there before the date comes. Go there. And you hear what you want to hear. Imagine what the doctor is telling you. Mine told me, you know, you've been coming for a long time and I just want to say. Well, that's what I imagined you was going to say. <laughs> Oh yeah. Let's see what it says. So that I lost it. So that you may feel the naturalness of your desire, and your desire will be realized. That home, that that house will be realized. That car will be realized. You now here it is, and we're going to close with this one. This sentence here is. Powerful. Clarifying your desire. Your desire takes no consideration of your problem. Of what it requires to manifest or to be realized. Your desire is, you see how I separated that? Your desire is the solution of your problem. Now, what we're doing here is going to clarify something here. In that sentence, he is saying, in part, this is where it says interchangeable, you can get confused. Let's temporarily, because it goes in and out, it's kind of, there's a definition for that. But let's put where it says your desire, let's name the problem right here. <clears throat> let's just take the liberty and cheat a little bit and call, call this with everything you need, your prayer request, whatever, whatever. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's see if it's a sickness or something that could, okay, let's say, well that is the solution. That your desire is the solution of your problem as the desire is realized, as this thing that you want is realized, and the, the problem is going to be dissolved. <laughs> you can't get that. <laughs> when you put it that way, when you put it that way. <laughs> As the desire, which is intangible, invisible, it's in spirit, it's in the love, it's in, it's in, the, it's in the essence, it's in the, the, what the real home is. As that home is being realized, the, 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 the problem of needing a house and all of that, that's being resolved. That's being resolved. That's, the, that's just being dissolved. It shows up. You wake up and, and, and the medical condition is just, it's either not there anymore, or the doctor knows exactly what to do. Or the medicine that was not doing anything before now suddenly begins to do. Somehow, the way that you don't understand this situation has corrected itself. It has been resolved. Your desire is the solution of your problem. As the, as the desire is realized, not the problem is realized. As the desire is realized, not the money, not the job, not the house, not any of that stuff. As the desire is realized, the problem is dissolved. The answer shows up. Your desires now are the invisible realities which respond only to the commands of God, and God commands the invisible to appear. Well, let me close with Dr. Robert Miller. You see, where it says Dr. Robert Miller, because this is a good example. Dr. Robert Millikan, scientist, was very poor. He created this affirmation, and he became very wealthy using this single, simple affirmation. And as I read it, listen to, observe, watch how this is in desire. 
has nothing to do with money. He became wealthy, but this is all about desire. His affirmation was, started with I have. I want money. So if we have a financial need, a desire to increase income, a new stream of, of, of in consciousness, a stream of income, a more money, a more money, a more money, a more stuff. I have not it, not that stuff. Now we got to get into the invisible, the intangible, the the, the, the believable, the, the yeah, yeah. The, the, but you, you got and you got to assume this of already having it. So he started off with I have. And once I get this, then I can have a new car, another house. This I have this and that. Once this happens, I have a lavish. Not no. So why are you? If you need ten thousand dollars, why 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 don't you just go? Well, you're gonna get something anyway. Why don't you go ahead and get more? Yeah. Going to the bank. <laughs> now you in the bank. All that stuff. In there. More than you can ever count or use. How do you want to pack on your job? <laughs> okay, here's your pack. And you walk away. I'll be back for some more. <laughs> well, I was see, I didn't get it now. Maybe you're not asking for it. Yes. <clears throat> I have a lavish, steady, dependable income. Consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. Yes. Okay. Now, this yes. second line is where we mess up and fail. Yes. Yes. Because we just want the lavish and steady dependable income. <laughs> <laughs> but it says he didn't leave it right. half a frame. Mm. But well, that says, I'm willing to do my part. Mm. You know, I talk about. Demonstrations in my life of healing or financial stuff or relationship healing and stuff, but you don't have time to. It would take it would take two or three days or a couple of weeks for me to tell you all I do that causes those things to happen. I, I can go to, the, for example, I can go to the supermarket and I see a loose basket over here. I don't just walk in the store. I'll take that basket and go put it over here where it's supposed to be. Or I'll take it into the store and use it. You know what I'm thinking? That's giving. That's giving. Then I was with a, a friend, a handyman who used to come to the house for regular for a few years. And when we, we would have to go to Home Depot, walk I said, take that basket. He said, I don't want to cause somebody to lose their job. That's, 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 you're taking work from somebody. He's not wrong, but neither am I. I'm invested. He lost. He, he now. Maybe it didn't affect his life, his consciousness, any way at all. I ain't concerned about that. I'm concerned about this is a seed that I'm planting because it's my intent. My intention is just to do the moral thing, the right, ethical thing. See, you can't omit these things for all of this other stuff to happen. Do you see what I'm saying? Just like we brought food here today. I put a sign up here that says, please don't take food home. It's not that I don't want to share, but here is the intent and the reason behind it. When I go home, I will be home only for a couple of hours. Then I'm in my car again. I'm going to about four homes where I go and I take food to people who cannot prepare food for themselves. One is in a nursing home for a long time. And I only met her because my cousin died recently and she was in a hospice situation and the woman who was in the uh, uh, roommate, I got to know that she seems to have no visitors. And has been there for a long time. And so each time I went back to take care of my cousin, I brought her food. So 
these kinds of things I do and have always done, and people don't realize that, that, that it says here, what are you doing? It doesn't work in a vacuum. You've got to be engaged. Receiving is in giving. Receiving, there's no law receiving, there's law giving. Okay, help me find that place. I have a lavish, steady, dependable income consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. So as we leave here, we want to say that this doesn't happen without you doing something now. And it's not about money, giving money. It's not about, but it includes that. Do you see what I'm saying? You, you got to be, you have to be open and flow. I, I, when I say it, taking a, 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 a shopping cart, that would have nothing to do with money. Right? So, I said, you're summoned to come here today. I said, and it will be catered by Heaven's Kitchen. <laughs> Do you know how long I've been cooking? <laughs> Started several days ago. Got up at 2 o'clock this morning to cook those cornbread fingers in there. Can I take you back 10 years and tell you about the giving through me that has nothing to do with money? I have stored up treasure in heaven. And therefore, I do not work. Work is a sin for me. I haven't worked since the early 80s. I started off with L.A. County when it's 1979, and when I started, I didn't know what I was saying. I said, I will work 10 years and retire, and I will not work on a job again. And at the end of that 10th year, I will sit. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> sit. Because I had a desire to retire and don't work no more. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? I had a desire. So when I discovered this teaching, when I looked back, I saw why I was where I was, being sick. Because I was sick when I came in here to this teaching. I had insomnia. I had a neurodermatitis. I was itching and scratching. So please don't prepare You can keep your papers quiet for a minute. And know that we have indeed been in the presence of God. And we have sat with the Holy Spirit. We have heard his voice speak through our minds. Each of us today has received a message, a lesson. A healing. Something has shifted. Something has changed in my life and in your life and in the lives of those people who you hold in prayer. Something is going on. We agree that we are all online right now on that WWW Worldwide Network, which is called the Christ Line. We're hearing that still small voice, which is the voice of God, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that voice not only speaks through our mind, but through the one mind at the same time, speaks to and through the minds of everybody who has anything to do with the breakthrough that you're experiencing in your life right now in the form of that problem, that need, that desire, that aspiration, that goal. Oh yeah! They are now hearing a sound in the mother on this network. 
And not only are they hearing for you, but you're hearing for them. And somehow, in a way that I don't know, you don't know, but because of your peculiar mindset, <coughs> we see in the heavens of your mind that there is busyness. There is stirring. There is movement. There's a divine orchestration. And God's saints, God's workers, 